Uh, I'm coming from Astronomical Observatory of Belgrade. Uh, I'm uh, currently employed in the Department for Numerical Simulations and Big Data. And uh, uh, I will talk about Gaia mission, uh, but uh, briefly. No, I am not going to go into too many details for uh, uh, Gaia mission because I want to work with you on real data uh, in the second part of, uh, of this lecture. So, uh, as Anton said, uh, one of the leading uh, European missions. Uh, uh, here I want to show you the... Uh, also, yeah, uh, you will see a lot of links in my presentations because, uh, because I want to share my presentation later with uh, all the students if that is okay. So when you go through a presentation, you will see links that you can use. And we start with a link uh, from ESDC, which is... Uh, uh, European, uh, uh, what was, e ESA uh, Science Data Center. Uh, this data center covers actually a lot of European and all European missions. Uh, here you can see, for example, from recently, JV JWST, James Webb Space Telescope, which is also partly uh, financed by uh, European uh, Europeans, European countries, and you can see many other, but uh, we are talking about Gaia today. Why am I showing you this slide? Because here you can see what is a total, and I will read it, uh, 808 terabytes of actual uh, archive storage at this moment. Uh, and here, one even more interesting number is monthly downloaded from this storage. It's 129 terabytes. So what, what does it mean, 129 terabytes of data downloaded from their data center? This means every day, even today, when we will start working on real data in real time, we will download and use their servers and take data. Every query, every job that you do will uh, actually reg register and increase this number. So this shows how much uh, all these European satellite missions are used. Second part, if we look only for data for the Gaia, uh, you can see here some basic data. For example, these two numbers are very interesting for me because they are saying that number of days uh, passed since 25 of July 2014, which is the day when Gaia, Gaia mission started working, it's 3,181 days. Number of days in mission extension, 1,364. So uh, Gaia is already in the mission extension and uh, it's already giving us much more than what was uh, put on the paper when they asked for financing and when they asked for uh, this spectacular astrometric telescope. Volume of data uh, recorded by Gaia is 117,000 gigabytes, which is uh, 117 terabytes. Uh, this is all the data coming from telescope. This is processed and then published on a website in, uh, in a textual, in ASCII form. So, I don't know if, if you are uh, familiar with the design of telescope. Telescope has two big mirrors here, and they are both uh, focused at the same focal point uh, here, behind which you see this big CCD chip. This chip, at the time when it was built, was the biggest CCD chip ever created. I think that today even, uh, I think that today only LSST and uh, other big telescopes uh, have uh, bigger chips than this. But so, how big is it? It's one meter and 42 centimeters like this. It's, uh, it was called gigapixel chips. Uh, it's actually uh, 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 created from a lot of smaller chips. At the beginning, you have two rows called Sky Mapper. Each row has seven uh, CCD chips, and each row covers one uh, mirror. So this is only data coming from a telescope uh, when you get star, like here, where, where I left my cursor, uh, actually, these two rows will try to find uh, what, what uh, part of uh, sky it is 
uh, covering. Then you have astrometric field, which is a big piece of chip. Then you have a blue photometry, red photometry, and radial velocity with spectrometer. So we have spectra for, from Gaia, but spectra is not main product. The main product is what you see here. So radial velocity, red and blue photometry, and astrometric position. How is Gaia working? So the telescope is actually covering the whole, uh, the whole uh, sky. Uh, and here you can see from uh, blue to green, uh, I will tell you. So uh, if you see the, the dark blue, this is uh, something like eight or 10 covered, 10 times covered uh, patch of sky. So Gaia is actually going always like this and making these stripes. And uh, here you have more than 200 uh, observations of the same patch on the sky. So uh, their goal is to cover the whole field of view, the whole, whole uh, sky uh, with at least 70 uh, uh, observations per uh, per patch, per, per area that is observed. Okay, um, some basic, uh, basic things really about Gaia, uh, but what, what we really need is to understand uh, what Gaia measures. Gaia measures distances, positions, space motion, uh, and many other physical characteristics. Uh, this catalog is told, is, it's said, they are still discussing, but it's said that it is complete up to 20th magnitude, which is really new and really incredible in the uh, field of astronomy. Uh, we never uh, have complete catalogs. Uh, of course, uh, Gaia is still covering just a small fraction of our galaxy with uh, around uh, 2 billion stars. Uh, currently observed and measured, uh, you know it's uh, 200 billion stars in our galaxy. So uh, we are uh, we have the first detailed uh, 3D map, but not the whole galaxy. It's a, a region, let's say, um, closest to us. When we talk, of course, about this completeness up to 20th magnitude, if you want to say that you have a uh, catalog that is complete up to 25 magnitudes, then it's really something that I think will happen in next uh, maybe two or three decades, something like that. I don't think it will be soon. Uh, it's important to say that 10 million stars are observed with accuracy better than 1%. This is also a great uh, deal. Uh, for Gaia. Uh, currently, uh, Gaia has these uh, data releases, DR, uh, and uh, they are currently in data release 3, which was uh, published recently in 2002. Uh, it is 10 terabytes in total of all data on this uh, data release, and uh, it, it is all accessible on the web. Uh, what does this mean? This means that 34 months, uh, Gaia was observing the whole sky and collecting data. And this collection, as the telescope passes over the same patch of sky again and again, it's, it's giving us better and better results. So uh, the first uh, data release was uh, after 14 months. The second data release was after 22 months third one after 33, 34 months, and the last one should be after 66 months. This is what they promised to have at least 70 times observation of each uh, star, of each object that is covered in their uh, catalog. This improves precision, of course. They can uh, record it once, and uh, it will still be in catalog, but it will not be very precise. Okay, so we have a big list here. It's not very visible, but um, this is a number of observations. So a number of uh, sources, 
So each dot is source. Later it is categorized if it is variable source, if it is Cepheid, star, if it is maybe galaxy, AGN, or something else. But number of sources uh, uh, with uh, good astrometry, which means they, had, uh, they have a very um, good astrometric solution, uh, it's one billion five hundred million, one and a half billion stars, sources. Then uh, we have uh, around uh, two billion stars with uh, uh, G magnitude. G magnitude is main uh, photometric band for uh, Gaia. Uh, there is a G magnitude covered in blue and in air, in R, in red and blue. Uh, when you switch to these two, actually you get a little bit smaller number of stars, of, of objects, but it's still more than 1.5 billion. Uh, this was really new and very important thing for Gaia. Uh, 33 million objects are with measured radial velocity. Before that, in uh, DR2, there was only 7 million of objects. And even with this number of 7 million objects covered with radial velocity, this was a huge success. Now we have 33 million, and it's probably the most, uh, again, the most complete catalog we have. Uh, there are others. You can always combine catalogs, but you need to be careful when you are doing that. Um, as I said, other um, studies were covered by data uh, by, by this data coming from Gaia. It's, you can maybe, you cannot see, but eclipsing binaries, long period variables, microlensing events, RR Lyra, and so on. Let's not go too much into details. This is Gaia archive. This is what I will present later and show you how we can work with this. Uh, when you go to Gaia archive, you have something like basic search. Um, and uh, in this search, you can actually type the name or uh, coordinates of some object, and it will give you uh, what Gaia uh, has of the data for that object. You can always use advanced search, and this is what we are going to, to do. In advanced search, you will need to write a query. Query is written in ADQL. This is part of SQL. This is a really important uh, thing to understand. If you want to have anything more advanced when you do some search, you need to know this programming language. But this programming language is really not uh, so hard. Uh, it's not on a level of Python or C or something like that. It's more like, uh, uh, it's, it's easier to understand. And it will not be a problem, I guess, for you. Uh, then you get something like this. This is a table. Uh, I created this job yesterday, uh, and uh, I entered some, some query, and I got this uh, result. This result can be uh, then interpreted, and uh, for example, I, I like to use uh, Python. You see here some Python commands where uh, I will create a graph, and this graph looks like this. We'll see if we can get to, to this uh, at the end of our lecture. But the idea is that uh, you learn how to go through these steps so that you can do this uh, on your own. Uh, uh, if you are uh, good with, uh, uh, with knowledge of some astrometric mission like this, uh, it will help you later with any other astrometric mission because uh, uh, this is actually like today like a standard in astronomy, in astrometry. Uh, what we need is, as I said, ADQL and Python. Uh, I understood you are uh, all familiar with Python, right? More or less, okay. So at the end, uh, uh, or on the, on the second part of this lecture, I will uh, work and I will write commands directly in AD, ADQL, and if anybody wants, uh, you can turn on your laptop, if you have it, and you can follow what I'm working, or you can follow it on the big screen, and then later uh, do it on your own, since you will have the presentation. So what is this ADQL? It's Astronomy Data Query Language. 
this is part, as I said, of SQL. SQL is probably the ultimate tool. I am not sure this is strictly correct. For me, it is the ultimate tool of relational database system management or RDMS. Uh, you can forget about SQL. If you, if you don't know to program in SQL, that's not so important uh, because ADQL uh, defines just one basic statement from SQL and it's select statement. This statement is then combined with functions and uh, identifiers uh, and other things that you can use uh, more or less from SQL, but there are some functions that are uh, implemented only for astronomy. That's why it's called astronomy data query language. Uh, on many places I found that uh, ADQL is easy to understand. Uh, look, select, you tell what you want to select from the catalog. Uh, from, you write from which uh, database you want to take uh, data. Where, you say, okay, I, I want to have this condition. This means where this is equal to something or something like that. And then you say if you want, for example, group or order or something like that, and you get your data. It's easy to understand, but it's hard to master. It's, uh, it's really like that. So what is uh, uh, important about ADQL? Uh, the, the most important thing is that you know what you can do. Uh, in a way uh, that it's not important that you know explicitly how uh, between operator works. You can always find it on a very detailed documentation, but you need to be aware that you can use between operator. So there are uh, classical operators uh, like uh, plus, minus, uh, times, division, and so on. Uh, there are uh, classical uh, arithmetic com comparators. Uh, is it equal, is it bigger, smaller than some number, and so on. Uh, then uh, you have statement where. This is one of most important statements, so it's for your search. When, when you say where something is uh, done or uh, accomplished. And then you have bill between, you have null. It's not, a f to, it's not a very simple, but it's very useful statement. Uh, you cannot use uh, double, uh, maybe you are used to see double star as a power. Uh, here you have to use a function that is called power. Uh, in the, you need to be aware of uh, integer division in ADQL. It will not give you a real value if you say three, three divided by 60, it will say zero. So whenever you want to use division, you need to say three 0 0.0 divided by 60.0 in order to get uh, some uh, realistic number. Uh, as I said, there are some more functions. So again, you need to know that there are functions that uh, convert from degrees to radians and from radians to degrees. But again, if you are not sure how it works, you can always find it on a documentation. You need to know that you can use uh, sine and cosine function, you can use power, logarithm, exponent, and so on. Uh, these functions are good to have in ADQL, but uh, what they say is that they are very expensive. But in which uh, way expensive? In expensive in a way of uh, CPU time. So everything you write in ADQL on this database, on this archive, goes as a job, as a text file, to their servers. Then they process your uh, request and send you data back. So uh, whenever you use some of these functions, you are actually uh, loading a lot of calculations on their server. Uh, it's not forbidden, but if you don't want to wait for the results like uh, 10 minutes or something like that, then you should avoid this if it is possible. Sometimes it's not possible and that's why uh, that is offered. Uh, what else? So we, we know about arithmetic functions, we know there are comparisons, we know about uh, mathematical functions, but there are also some geometric functions. 
these functions are uh, uh, implemented only for astronomers, not all of them, uh, but mainly. Uh, for example, contains, this is a predicate function. This means it uh, is expecting something else. So you cannot say contains and don't ask where, the language will be confused and it will show you error. You need to say contains something in something, usually two, uh, two values or, uh, or something more specific. Uh, we will see later examples, uh, but the geometric functions that are important are box, circle, and point. Also polygon, but not so uh, uh, often. Area function and distance function. These functions are uh, giving you, for example, distance is giving you a distance between two uh, objects uh, in the catalog on the uh, celestial sphere. Um, again, on the previous slide, I wrote some functions are in degrees, some are in radians. Be careful and always check sine and cosine. They are expecting arguments in radians, but a uh, box function or area function or distance, it's expecting uh, something in degrees. So you need, you need to be careful. So what are the ways to learn ADQL if you have never uh, done it before? You can always use trial and error approach, one of my favorites. Uh, you can always you know, download, uh, find examples on internet, uh, and learn during the small changes that you create uh, on these examples to uh, make them work for your uh, specific job. Or you can always learn uh, basics from a book, uh, or probably the best variant is to combine these two. That's why I am giving you a link to a completely free and uh, uh, available book it's around 60 pages and it's available in PDF and also in HTML format so that you can easily search through this book. Uh, very useful stuff, but uh, for me, it turned out that I really don't need all, all this book, uh, everything that's in, in it to uh, know how to use ADQL. Okay, before we start using ADQL, it's uh, important for you to know that there are other ways of using databases, even the RDMS databases, re relational uh, database management systems. Gaia is one of them, Gaia Archive is one of them. So uh, TopCat is a useful tool, it's used by many astronomers. Uh, you can uh, create plots inside this tool, this is, for example, the biggest difference than when using a Gaia Archive tool that we will use. Uh, there is a link, and uh, with this tool, you can literally select and click. I want this source, uh, this database with real, uh, with, for example, right extension, declination, and so on, and it will produce some results. But if you want to use TopCat, in full access, in, in really uh, maximum, then you need to know ADQL. And there is a small window here where you can write ADQL uh, queries. So at the end, for me, it turns out it's more or less same what, uh, what you use, you need to learn ADQL. Uh, this is one example, uh, it's not so important and it can produce graphs as, as you see, it's similar to the graph that I showed you at the beginning. Um, and we will see if we have time to cover that. Uh, there is another way, it's Python. Uh, today, especially in astronomy, I find that uh, anything you wish you can find in Python. Uh, it's just not the source of coffee, but everything else <laughs> works in Python. So uh, if you want, you can go into a Python way. It's covered by AstroPy package, Astro Query, uh, library. Uh, you need to learn again ADQL because actually Python is used to send commands in ADQL to the archive. Um, it's a little bit different. 
Uh, it can do more, of course, because you can always uh, use loops, you can use whatever you like in Python, and then send it to query, which is, for example, not possible in a, uh, in a basic ADQL. But again, uh, you need to learn, and then you can switch to this if you really are advanced user of this. A link again for this uh, package. Okay, so let's see one use case, one example. I will read it, you, you, you concentrate, and tell me if it is um, uh, complicated or not. So, you get something like this for, from your mentor, or you have idea like this. I want to retrieve a sample from Gaia of filtered sources, this means I don't want everything, those that are brighter than G20.5, why? Because somebody will say after G uh, magnitude 20.5, Gaia measurements are not so reliable. So, we want to retrieve a sample of filtered sources, those that are brighter than G20.5, magnitude with a parallax measurement, we want to have a parallax measurement, in a circular region, centered on large Magellanic cloud, with a search radius of five arc minutes in data release tree. And then the output should be ordered by angular separation from the center, from small to large. So this is something that we will try to do now. Um, there are some notes, of course, you need to know the right extension and declination for Magellanic, large Magellanic cloud. This is easily found anywhere. Uh, the user here didn't say uh, if what he wants from the database. So we need to be uh, aware of what we have in database and then uh, choose. Uh, there is always this statement, don't be lazy, don't select all. Believe me, if you select all, you will get a huge file which is not useful, cannot be downloaded, and so on. So don't be lazy. Use always and define what you need from this database. Beware of integer division. Another time we need to cover that. So let's go and uh, we have something like one hour uh, and do some useful stuff in ADQL. This is a link for the archive. So again, I'm saying uh, uh, to Anton, so don't worry, really, uh, laptops are not mandatory. I am just, uh, I just would like that you can at least type some simple query during the, the time that I'm writing here on the big screen. Uh, this is the link. Uh, if you cannot uh, type all this, just type in Google Gaia Archive and you will find it. Gaia Archive in Google, and the first link should be this one. Okay, I think we, we should start now, and uh, uh, if somebody missed something, it will be on the screen. We are uh, now on Gaia Archive page, and uh, on the left side, you can see Gaia Data Release 1, Data Release 2, and Data Release 3. Uh, when you work with Gaia data, you can choose any of these data releases. You don't, have, uh, you don't have always to use the newest one. It is the most complete, but if for some reason you need data release two, you can always go back and use data release two. Uh, we will use data release three. Uh, then here under data release three, if in, on your screens you should probably see more than me, I, I see only two lines. Uh, but you see Gaia DR3 Gaia Source and Gaia DR3 Gaia Source Lite. These are two main catalogs that we can use. The first one is, of course, full catalog. The second one is a light version, smaller version. If you want some basic operations, you can always use light because you will use less time on the server. Then, uh, there are some astrophysical parameters here that you can choose. Uh, this is all uh, imagined as a separate catalog. That's why they all have names. Gaia DR3 dot total galactic extinction dot something. Uh, there are auxiliary catalogs. 
Again, a lot of them, cross-match catalogs, extra-galactic catalogs, and so on. Uh, I hope you, you get the point. The point is that Gaia DR3 is really com complete and big catalog. So what we are going to do, we are going to use the main catalog for now. This is really the biggest part of Gaia. If you click on small plus in front of the name of catalog, you will see the columns in that catalog. So in Gaia, everything, this is a, this is classical ASCII catalog. So you have like 60 columns, around 60 columns, and they are all filled. There are many rows. Uh, how many rows? How many sources? As, as I said, there is almost 2 billion sources covered by Gaia. This means that the whole catalog has 2 billion rows with 60 columns. I hope you get the picture of what we are dealing with. And uh, our job is to say, I want object in row, I don't know, 59 and then 2871 and so on. Uh, we want to select some of uh, these sources and use them for, the, for some kind of research. So uh, here you can, you can see the list of all uh, columns. If I scroll down, you will see the first one is solution ID, source ID, random index, right extension, right extension, error, declination, declination, error, parallax, 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 error, and so on. Many, many, many options. As I said, almost 60 columns of, of data. Everything you can imagine here is, for example, photometric, uh, magnitude in red, uh, mean magnitude. So this is mean value after a lot of observations. And so on. So it's a big list. Everything that starts with RV is radial velocity. Very important. And so on. I will go back to the beginning. Just the, the idea is that you understand uh, how it works. So. Uh, if we go back to our presentation, I hope you can still see. It's not important that you see everything, but uh, this is our uh, text of, uh, of a use case. And of course, since it was a complicated uh, text, you saw there is a lot of demand from us. We will do part by part. And that's, that's how you write programs in ADQL. You never start with the full requirement, everything, and then type everything at once. You, usually you always try to separate in smaller uh, groups. Uh, during this example, I will show you how predicate function contains works. So contains is a predicate function. This means that it is usually after the where statement because where is something that ex expects predicate, okay? You follow me, you can understand everything. Nod, uh, raise your hands if, if you have any problem with uh, English or, or anything else. Don't, don't be afraid to interrupt, okay? So this is a contains function. What does it do? It expects geometry and then another geometry. And it will tell you if the first geometry is in the second geometry. Very easy. So what are geometry? Geometries in ADQL are point, box, circle, polygon. These are geometries. So you can ask something like, is there a box three degrees by three degrees? For, for example, is there a box three degrees by three degrees? Uh, somewhere on the sky in big circle that has radius of 10 degrees that contains less than 100 stars. You can do something like that. That's, that's Gaia. This is astrometry. This is a astrometric uh, solution. Most times we will use point source in something. Point source in box or point source in circle. So uh, why point source? Because 
everything on the sky except big galaxies, which are not important for the Gaia, are point sources. We want to find as many of them in some area. Okay. So we are going back to this. And we say, select. Uh, all the commands in ADQL should be written in capital letters. It's not mandatory. It will understand if you write with small, but this is more like a good practice from uh, the community, how you can better see your code. Select what we want to select. Let's say for the beginning, uh, you can see first three columns in Gaia source is solution ID. We don't need solution ID. This is uh, identification number of uh, equation that was used to uh, produce a solution of astrometrically good quality. Not so important, but it is more or less something how they understood that source is on that place on the sky. Okay? Not, not so important. Designation is internal designation in Gaia catalog. Source ID is universal identification number. Okay? So we can start by using universal identification number. So we say select source underscore ID. And uh, what else we expect to know about each point source on the sky? Tell me, what do you expect? When somebody tells you, show me a big deeper on the sky, you will point your hand to some star and you will say this star belongs to Ursa Majoris. What is the first thing we need to know about that star? Coordinates, Coordinates exactly. So we will say right ascension, right ascension and declination. In astronomy, it's very important to know also errors, but we are not going to cover this. So if we wanted errors, it would be error A underscore. Now I don't know the designation on error. I go on the list and find it. So I scroll down, random impact, ah, error. Error is right extension, error, error is error of right extension. Uh, of course, it's not expected of you to know all the abbreviations that are written here. You can get them by clicking on a, uh, on a help buttons and so on. So right extension and declination is pretty much uh, unique. So we don't need for this class, let's say just these three. Uh, always follow this. Where is it? Ah, this. This is a universal example how to write ADQL. If it is not readable, always start with select what, then from where, and where are some search conditions. This is minimum that you need to have. Uh, there is also join, there is between, and so on. So we want to ask this database to select something. These are three row, three columns, and we want to say from where. Why we need to define from where? Because as I said at the beginning, there are different catalogs. And in this first example, we will use the first big catalog, the most, uh, the, la the latest one, this one. And you need to type that in. So from Gaia dr3 dot Gaia underscore so source. Okay? Simple enough, but it is case sensitive. If they write something with big letters here in the name, you need to, to write it in big letters. Next, we say where. What do we want? We want, let's go back to our example. Uh, you see what is uh, highlighted. I want to retrieve a sample. It's not important filtered sources, so on. I want to retrieve a sample in circular region centered on large Magellanic cloud. So we are doing only this for now. So where we use function contains. Contains, okay. Uh, as you can see here, it changes color. If I don't write S, it thinks uh, this is just a name or something like that. But if it is fully written, 
as a command in SQL, it will change color. So where, this means what we want to search, and now what we want to search. We want to search, as I said, every point source in some sphere, and as it was asked from us, in a sphere of radius five arc minutes. So uh, you can see here, it, the contains expects geometry, and then again geometry. And at the end, this is important part, the contains function returns one or zero. One means this geometry is inside geometry two. Zero means this geometry is not in the geometry two. Very simple. So we will say contains uh, something in brackets equal one. I hope that is clear. So what is the first geometry? First geometry is point. So we want to ask if there are points. You see it changed color. Point source in, and now here we need to write coordinates of this point source. How we do that? Uh, again, as I said at the beginning, you need to know what you can use in ADQL. But really, how to implement? You can always search in data, in uh, help files. Uh, as coin contains, uh, was expecting two geometries. Uh, points, point source uh, expects three arguments. First one is coordinate system. And uh, usually it is ICRS, International Coordinate Reference Frame System. Then uh, right extension and then declination. So this is how this uh, point function works. So we will say under, uh, it's important to put them under, um, sorry, under this, uh, how it's called in English. Uh, you write ICRS. This is a defined name. You can choose systems. It's written again in a help file. ICRS, then right extension, and then declination. Now the question is, will uh, SQL understand uh, that I am sending him right extension and declination? Yes, it will understand, because I defined here right extension and declination. So I need to use the same code word that I used here. This is like anywhere in programming. So if you define in the beginning in Python code something that is called a list, RA, you need to call the, again, same RA. Yeah, so what is this thing? What is ICRS? Coordinate system. International Coordinate Reference System. Uh, this means that it needs to know um, uh, how to find point source on the sky. That's all. There are many, many different systems, but this one is and then you write a comma and then circle. This is the second geometry. Again, check the contains, geometry one, geometry two. Uh, circle, and then we again open uh, brackets. And uh, here we will write again coordinate system. So ICRS. And uh, we will write uh, so here he expects right extension, declination, and some radius. But if I, if I leave RA and DEC, he will connect it with this. What we want is to connect with a large Bacillanic cloud, because we want the circle to be centered on large Magellanic cloud and check what are the point sources in a radius of five arc minutes. That's why we cannot use here RA and DEC. We will use right extension and declination of large Magellanic cloud. Is that right? Is that understood? And I, I gave it here uh, on the previous slide. LMC uh, 81.28 and minus 69.78. So I will change RA to 81.28.
degrees, this is in degrees, and declination in minus its southern hemisphere, right? Large Magellanic Cloud, everybody knows about that, and radius. So what to write in radius? They ask for five arc minutes. You are all uh, familiar with arc minutes, arc seconds, arc degrees, right? So uh, this function expects degrees. What should I write here to get five arc minutes? Five divided by 60. But as it, with points, because it was said beware of integer division. So it's five point divided by 60 point. You can write 60 point, you can write 60.0, it's all fine. We will put, we'll put like this. Then the second bracket from the beginning, right? And uh, equals one. Okay, so let's see what will happen if we run this query. Um, follow now, I will put this a little bit smaller because I need to find the submit button that is not visible when, uh, so let's click submit. Job launched, job finished. Job launched, status tick mark means finished, we, means we didn't have any error. Uh, this is the job name, important for some other things. Uh, number of rows, two, okay, number of rows, uh, 28,972. Did anybody else get this? Raise your hand if you got this on your screen. Okay. So, uh, if you uh, hold your mouse uh, here on the on this number of rows, you will see how mod how much was operating time. Operating time on their server was 481 millisecond. So, let's change in our code. Let's just delete C in circle and run a query and you will see error. Now this is error. If you go on information here, you will receive uh, what was error summary. And I will read you, look, look at this. It says no ADQL function called C-I-R-L-E. It means he didn't recognize the command. So this was just a demonstration of error, okay? I don't expect that you get this error. So I will go back in the code and write circle. This is, if I submit query again, uh, I produced another 500 kilobytes. And this is what I, wrote, uh, what, what I showed you at the beginning of presentation. These are kilobytes that are going into this cumulative amount of terabytes that is transferred over Gaia archive every month. So they are actually every month they have 117 terabytes of data transferred on this way. And finally, if we want to see data, we can click on this small table and we will receive what we asked. So we asked for source ID, write extension and declination. We have three columns. And we have here only first uh, uh, 50 or something like that. Uh, in total, there are 29,000. If we want to go back, we just click here on, let me uh, put it a little bit bigger. So we need to click back to advanced ADQL. And we are back to our code here. So this was the first part is done. Uh, this. So I want to retrieve a sample in circular region, done. Let's now do a filtered sources, those that are brighter than 20.5 magnitude and that have parallax measurement. Let's see how to do that. We will go back here. This code is, this code is already okay. We go in the next line and we say end. Now why end? Uh, where is a predicate function that expects arguments? These arguments are what you want to search, how to narrow your search. First one was contains. Then we said 
and then we have second argument, then and, and we can add as many arguments as we want. So we will say and. Uh, what was it written? F uh, photo uh, G magnitude 20.5. We can scroll down here on the left to find G magnitude. This is parallax, right extension, astrometric, and so on. I know it's eh, here. Photo G mean magnitude. You have mean magnitude flux over error. You have number of observations and so on. Let's use this. So I need to type exactly as it is written in a database. Fot uh, underscore uh, G underscore mean underscore mag. Okay. And what was the question? It needs to be brighter than 20 magnitude. What, what, are, what, what are we going to write here? Less, less. Smaller, less than 20.5. And we hope that it will be understood by the SQL. And we type uh, again, we go to submit query. Let's see, it's working, it's done. Tick mark means we finished. And uh, let's compare these two numbers. So the number of stars selected in a region uh, when we entered without this con uh, condition was 28,972 stars. Now it's 28,895 stars. So it's just 100 stars less. But these 100 stars are the stars that have usually big errors. We want to avoid, whenever it, it is possible, uh, stars and sources on the sky that are uh, uh, fainter than 20.5. It's not ob obligatory, it's a recommendation. Then we add another con uh, condition, and we say, and again, as I said, we can add as many as we want, and now we want parallax, because in the text it was written with parallax measurement. So the user here, he is not concerned about the distance. So he is not concerned if he wants to see stars that are uh, more than one kiloparsec or less than 200 parsecs. He just wants to have complete data with parallax. If there is no parallax, he doesn't want that source in the list. Very simple and parallax with double L. Again, you can find it on the list. Parallax is not null. This is important. Uh, at the beginning, when I was presenting uh, what we can do with uh, uh, Gaia, I said there is a null function. Uh, null is uh, uh, whenever Gaia measures something in these 60 columns, if it is first right extension, it will write here something, then error something, something, and then, for example, uh, G magnitude. For some reason, the telescope could not resolve what is the magnitude. And it will write now. But there is a, a condition is and is not. So you can literally ask if it is written as null or not. We don't want uh, all, we don't want values, we don't want rows that have null. So we are asking is not now. Understood? Questions? Okay. And we said submit query. Yep, exactly. And you see the error. The error says, so let's see information. Uh, error summary, unknown column parallax. He was very careful and so let's fix that. Parallax. Submit query. And it's there, 394 uh, kilobytes, processing time 300 milliseconds, number of rows 21,000. Now we have one sample that is better than the first one that we started. Let's see what is the final thing that they ask 
So we finished this also, what is in red. The final thing that they asked is that output should be ordered by angular separation. For this, we need function called distance. Uh, this function, again, expects geometry and another geometry, but it is written, it must be point geometry and point geometry. Why point? Because you cannot mathematically, you cannot calculate distance between two areas. You can always calculate distance between two points. If you want between two areas, then you would have to take the center of area one, center of area two, and then the, uh, use the distance. So we will use distance to calculate the angular separation from center of this region. So how we can do that? We will say here, and now distance, that's the code word, distance. You see it changed color. Uh, then we need to write arguments. Uh, what are arguments? Point source, point source of geometry one and geometry two. What is po uh, point source for the geometry one? This means right extension and declination of the first point and then right extension and declination of the second point. So we need four arguments. So what four arguments we are going to write here? So era dec, era dec. But this is of course not going to work. What are the first two right, and right extension and declination? They are coordinates of large Magellanic cloud. And the second two are coordinates that are found in the table. So each source will take right extension, declination, and compare, calculate with right extension and declination of uh, large Magellanic cloud. So we write instead of first era, we write the right extension and declination of large Magellanic cloud. Second era and dec, the software, the, the code language will recognize from the first row. You see, I will, yeah, you see from here, right extension and declination. And uh, this is distance. Uh, what we want with this distance? We want it to be as it was written in the, so it should be ordered by angular separation. Uh, but is it understood that, again, this angular separation needs to be less than five arc minutes because we are looking in the same sphere. So I will enter here uh, another argument, uh, actually just uh, the comparison, less than 5.0 divided by 60.0. Uh, this now, written as it is, will produce the same result. Uh, you, you understand what we asked? We asked uh, for point source here, and this is point source of large Magellanic cloud with era dec equals 81 six, minus 62. We are asking if this one is less than five arc minutes. This is the same as the first argument written here. Is it in the circle? So I will run the code and I expect the same number of stars. If it is not the same number of stars, then we made some mistake. So let's see if it is. Uh, exactly the same number. You see, number of rows, uh, 21739, 21739. So it's perfectly okay. But why we introduced this? Because we want to have order by angular separation. We want to show to user first in the, in the data, in the uh, final uh, uh, table, we want to show first the star or source that is closest to large Magellanic cloud, then this one that is a little bit further than this one that is further, and then this one. 
That's why we need to introduce distance. Since it is the same, we can remove this part from, from the top. So let's do that. I will delete this. This was useful for the beginning, but now we can change that with this. More, uh, more simple and nice solution. And we, we learned both functions, okay? Contain and distance. Now we want order. If you check the example how to write, order is always last one. It has the word by. So we need to write order by what? By ang sep, for example. This is angular separation. But we need to tell the code what is angular separation. In order to do that, we can define this at the beginning. Here, during the select command, we can define some uh, values. So we will define the value as angular separation. But which value? Exactly this one. So the same that was the search condition now becomes uh, another value that will be calculated. So put at the end comma, uh, usually, not usually, it's, uh, uh, it cannot end with comma. So this will produce error. If I put comma, it means there is another thing to be written. So I put this distance, less than and so on. Um, but uh, we want just uh, without the condition. We, we just want to have this distance calculated and we can use word as and then put the name, ang sep, angular separation, the same one as I wrote down there. So is this clear? So we are using again function distance now in two different ways. One is for the search condition with predicate, predicate uh, function where, the other use is in select command where we use as to define actually a variable. And now we run this. Let's see what happens. It's finished. Same number of rows, but if we click on the display top rows, you see the first one has angular separation 0 0.0005. This is the closest star to the center of Large Magellanic Cloud. If Gaia can resolve stars in Large Magellanic Cloud, this means this star is from Large Magellanic Cloud. Mo most probably. And with this, we uh, finished the, uh, what was asked from us. Uh, if you look on the second, so all the jobs that we sent, they are all here. They don't disappear until you log out. When you uh, close the screen, this will disappear. But you can compare, you can download both of them. And you can click on this or on, on this and compare and see the, the first one that we produced was unordered. The second one was ordered. And another thing it's, that is important, you need to download, but you need to change format. This VOT table, it's visual, virtual observatory table. It's uh, not very important. For example, I like CSV, so I use comma separated value. And uh, you select the job, for example, first one and second one. They are both fine and you click download. Download results and you get CSV. Save it, for example, on desktop. Open with some, open with, for example, text editor and you receive results of our search. And uh, what I wanted to show you you remember that in select command, at the end, I wrote uh, angular separation. Everything you write in select command will be written in the final uh, code. 
That's why uh, you have here source ID, right extension, declination, and another column, which is calculated. It's not from data. It is calculated using the Gaia data. And you can see the separation. OK, was this clear uh, in the presentation? I have two more simple examples. For example, another use case. I want G magnitude, so similar as the previous one, of all stars except Cephates. This is interesting. How you find in the database all stars except Cephates? And uh, the question is, why would somebody want this? So what are Cephates? Cephates are variable stars. They change uh, brightness, right? You know that. So if we want to explore what is happening in the Large Magellanic Cloud, and we want to explore and uh, investigate stars around Large Magellanic Cloud, we don't want those stars that change brightness all the time. So we can exclude them. How we can do that? Very simple. I will show you. Uh, there is a catalog called Vari Cephade in Gaia database that already uh, decided and categorized all the sources on the sky. If they were variable sources and they agree with Cephade light curve, they would be categorized as Cephades. So we can easily combine our data from Gaia with another data from Gaia catalog, but the auxiliary catalog, and ask, is it in this or not in this? You know, so it's, you are asking what, I, what uh, is in one area and what is not in another area. So this is another example. Uh, third example was, for example, as a, again, example as example. Uh, I want to carry out a positional cross match between two catalogs using a cone search radius of one arc second. This is very useful in astronomy. For example, we had Hipparchus catalog, Hipparchus mission before Gaia. And uh, Hipparchus was very precise, it was fine, but it couldn't cover as many uh, sources as Gaia. So we want, for example, to take uh, star number one from Hipparchus catalog, compare with, uh, uh, with uh, search radius of one arc second, and ask Gaia if Gaia found something on the same location where Hipparchus found a source. This is useful uh, when you want to find uh, the same stars that were in two different catalogs. Because otherwise you cannot identify them. Uh, the stars don't have their names written. Uh, the source ID that we used from Gaia, it is unique identifier in Gaia. It's not unique identifier for all stars. So that's why you need to know how to do a cross match. Uh, so uh, I have here, so I have written the uh, answers to, to the examples in case that we don't have uh, much time to deal with this. And I want to show you how it looks to join two catalogs. I will copy this to our query so that you can see how it works. So we delete this. We don't need it anymore. And I paste this code. And what does it say? So let's, let's see. It's very simple. Instead selecting at the beginning, uh, right extension, declination, and so on, this time, I uh, decided to go with select all. So what I told you at the beginning is don't do this. Don't be lazy, don't select all. It can be huge, really huge file. But in this case, I decided to go only for top 100 results. Since I reduced the file to top 100 results, I don't care that it will produce a big file in, in a way that it will give me all 60 columns, okay? Just 100 rows, it's, it's not a big deal. From, what is the difference now? Uh, we used, uh, in a previous example, we used from Gaia DR3 source. Now, 
we say from public Hipparchus as hip. This is the name of a Hipparchus catalog, and this is the name that we defined. Every time you see as, this is uh, giving a name to something in SQL. So we say from public Hipparchus, we will call him hip, join Gaia database that we will call Gaia. Join command is very useful. So it joins two catalogs. But if you want to join two catalogs, you must have something on which you will join. That's why on is uh, mandatory whenever you use join command. Okay, for now? So we call public Hipparchus. Then we join this on Gaia. Why we uh, didn't do vice versa? Because Gaia DR3 is bigger catalog. So you always join smaller on bigger. This is a rule for relational databases. It's uh, much less computing time. You can do also the other way, but this is less computing time. We say on what? On distance. Because we want to see what is, where the distance is smaller than some number. And uh, in our example, somebody asked us to give him everything in radius of one arc second. When you convert to degrees, this is 0 0.00028. So I will write here uh, smaller than 0 0.0028. This is one of the most basic examples that you can do with uh, ADQL, but very common thing that you will need. Uh, why is this so important? So let, let's imagine another scenario. Your mentor gives you a list of 250 stars. Uh, each star has right extension and declination, but he didn't write any source ID. He didn't tell you uh, where he got that. Maybe he got that list from a colleague from Germany. And uh, he wants you to find these, these stars in Gaia and to extract from Gaia all uh, possible uh, uh, data points. For example, parallax, parallax uh, G magnitude, and so on. What you will do? You will say, not from public Hipparchus, but you will say from my database. And you upload my database here. There is a small database with a plus. You upload txt file. There is instruction that it should be separated in a specific way, for example, just a, a comma. You upload that. He will recognize it as another database with your name, so my database that doesn't exist in defined names. And then you connect your database as, for example, my, uh, join with Gaia as Gaia on, on the, on the uh, then you define on what you will connect. Here I connected Gaia right extension and Gaia declination with Hipparchus right extension and Hipparchus declination that is smaller than this. You can do more simple. You can just say on which you want to connect. That's fine or you can immediately use uh, some kind of criterion that I showed here. As a last example, I will give you this. Create H HR Herzung Russell diagram. Do you know what is Herzung Russell diagram? You are familiar with that. Let me show you. Uh, these are the limits that I wanted to give you when, when you do this uh, exercise at home. Um, if you tell uh, Gaia, uh, give me all stars from catalog, because I want to create very big higher diagram. Uh, uh, and if you don't put any limits, it will produce two billion rows, and you don't want that. Uh, I wrote you some that are very uh, clear, some that may not be clear to you, but the uh, reason is written here. There is a full article, scientific paper, that is very uh, good, well, very well written, where scientists, astronomers go into details why these criteriums would produce the best results. 
So, for example, they don't want anything where parallax over error, this is uh, when you divide parallax with error, they don't want anything that has a smaller number than 10. Uh, the bigger number means smaller error, okay? So that's why they want with small error. They don't want big errors also on photo G magnitude. They don't want big errors in red, in blue. Why? Because for a higher diagram, we need to uh, extract blue minus air or blue minus visual or something, some other color. And then there are these excess factors, visibility periods. Look at this. This is what uh, your friend asked at the beginning about the sphere that I showed you, how, how Gaia is uh, observing. If there are uh, some stars that uh, fall into the region that was not observed many times, we don't want that measurement, okay? We just don't want something that was observed by Gaia less than eight times. Why eight? They wrote that in the paper. They think it's something like a reasonable argument. You know, you, you must put something. There are stars that were observed 200 times. Some of them were observed just once. We don't want those. And there is more complicated, something like he squared. It's a statistical analysis that you can do where you calculate probability. And then if this probability is smaller than something that depends on magnitude, then you don't want this measurement. Don't worry about this I gave you. Uh, you can use, for example, just first five and see what happens, how many you will get, or you can use all of them. But what is a uh, uh, Herzog-Russell diagram? You know, there is one funny sentence in, a, in astronomy. Uh, there is a question, what is the saddest part about being a star? So pretty much everything about your life is determined by how much you wait at birth. <laughs> that is actually a funny explanation uh, of HR diagram. HR diagram says there is a main sequence of stars. You are familiar. Sun is one of these stars at the main sequence. Uh, it will go through instability strip. This is a area when stars go from one area to another our star will become a uh, red giant. When it becomes red giant at the end of the life, it will explode in a way that outer shell of the star will separate. The inner part will become white dwarf. So from this place, it will go to this place on the diagram. This is funny explanation. This is more like uh, astronomical explanation of a diagram. Here you have some stars like Betelgeuse, a supergiant. Uh, when Betelgeuse explodes, he doesn't leave a white dwarf. He leaves, uh, leaves a black hole or neutron stars and so on. This is what we got from Hipparchus. I told you at the beginning, Gaia is astrometric mission. Hipparchus was also astrometric mission. Uh, also uh, sent by European Space Agency. And uh, this is the best results we received until Gaia. So until like how much, uh, 2014, this was the best astrometric data we had. And our best uh, estimates for stellar evolution for higher diagrams was based on this. Here, each dot is one star. So. Uh, this is color coded. The places that are blue and black is uh, the least amount of stars. Those that, uh, that are colored uh, have more stars on one place. We want to see, can we uh, get something like this with DR3? So if you want to stay with me for uh, two more minutes, we can do this. It's really two more, two more minutes. We are going here. I have prepared the code, for example, four. I will show you the code is uh, pretty simple, nothing special. Okay, maybe I can, yeah, it's better to go here and then I, I will just copy. Um, disregard this, it's in Serbian. <laughs> okay, so uh, what this code says, uh, first, when, when I was writing the code, 
I said, uh, okay, I don't want to select everything that I need. For the beginning, I will use count command. Count command is very useful command. It will return always one row, one value, saying how many stars you have with this uh, criterion, criterion, okay? With this search suggestion. Uh, this is when I want really to get data. So what I want from Gaia? From Gaia, I want to select BP underscore RP. This is already given value in Gaia with uh, blue minus R color for each star. So you don't have to download blue magnitude, red magnitude. You can simply download value of these two uh, when you uh, do that comparison. And this is a simple, uh, I hope simple. So this is, uh, you know, the relation for converting absolute magnitude to uh, apparent magnitude. This is apparent magnitude to absolute magnitude. Mean five log d plus five. But uh, don't forget that in this formula that I hope all of you know, this is distance in parsec. So this is in parsec. Uh, Gaia doesn't give you distance. Gaia measure parallax. Parallax is in milli arc seconds. So you need to convert from parallax to distance. What you will wrote right here, instead of D, you will write 1000 uh, uh, divided by P, by parallax. Why 1000? Because uh, parallax is given in milli arc seconds, not in arc seconds. So uh, when you have division, you have logarithm. This is logarithm of 1000 minus logarithm of parallax. L logarithm of 1000 is three. When you uh, multiply three by five, that's 15, and you have plus five, that's why in my formula at the end you have minus 10, just, just to know that. And I converted from distance to parallax. And I said this as mg, so that we have that uh, data. And these are just conditions. So just look how simple is this code. I want uh, BPRP and absolute magnitude that I defined as mg, and from Gaia source DR3 with this, with this, uh, uh, with this uh, solutions, a search criteria. And let's uh, copy this. I will put it here. I will just delete the comment that I had at the beginning. And everything else is fine. When you do this at home, you can uh, first try with, with this. Just ask Gaia to give you everything where parallax is bigger than five. Why bigger than five? I defined, uh, I wanted all stars that are closer than 200 parsecs. Five divided by 1000 because of milli arc seconds, 200 parsecs. This will give you five million stars and it's very hard to work with five million stars. But if we send this query, uh, you will see now that it's working and it will work for some time. Uh, this query needs like five minutes to finish. We are not going to wait for that because I am already exactly at 90 minutes. Uh, I will uh, uh, show you the data that I downloaded yesterday. So this is uh, what I received. It's a big, big file, just two columns. And if you go at the end, Control end. Uh, you will see that I have 1,433,000 stars. And let's plot this. I will give you also the code uh, for this. It's written in Python. Um, sorry. It's a very simple code, nothing spectacular. Uh, but uh, I hope you will understand everything, so I want this. So the code says, okay, I have some comments there, I will delete that, but the code says first import pandas because we want to use data frame, it's the simplest way to use uh, CSV. 
Uh, then figure uh, subplots, I use histogram, uh, 2D, 2D histogram, simple scatter plot, this is scatter plot. Histogram is over, uh, hi, uh, histogram is written over the scatter plot. Scatter plot has z order zero, so it will be a layer below the histogram. And for histogram, I used power normalization. You will see, you can remove this and you will get the, the same result. So let's run this code and see what happens. It also needs some time, but this is our higher year. And you can see how better we have then, uh, let me show you what was previously uh, known as a, a best possible uh, higher diagram before Gaia. And we produced this with, eh, let's see if it is finished, uh, the job. Ah, it's finished. So uh, you see number of rows, I don't know if you can see, 1,043,433 is the same as what I downloaded yesterday and it needed just 65 seconds. 65 seconds to get data, very simple query and a very simple uh, algorithm for uh, producing this file. So uh, if you, for example, in this code uh, say, I don't want histogram, just to show you that. So if we don't overplot histogram and we don't overplot these colors, we just want to see the, the stars, really, you will receive this. So this is just each dot, black dot is one star. We have one and a half million stars presented here. And if we want to see a little bit better what's happening, we need to introduce histograms. So I actually divided the whole picture into small areas, small cubes, and each cube counted how many stars and that's how I got nice colors for the histogram. Sorry for keeping you five more minutes. Uh, you will receive the presentation and you will receive the code for the examples and also the solutions so that you can go through them. As I, as I told you, learn from examples. And if you need detailed uh, instructions, you can always uh, use the book that I provided. It's free of charge. Everybody can download and learn from their ADQL. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much again, Christel. Uh, why does uh, the diagram has some yellow area and uh, huh? other areas? So, uh, first thing that was uh, observed by scientists who wrote the paper that I gave you the link, uh, that they uh, saw this huge, huge number of white dwarfs. This was not visible before. And uh, the colors here are just the scale of how dense is this region. On the scale, if it is, uh, what is this, yellow color, then it's 1,200 stars on one dot. So this means Actually, you can see that main sequence stars in our galaxy are the most populated stars, at least in our uh, neighborhood, because we said, let's see what's up there until 200 parsecs. You can try and home, put some bigger number for parallax and see what you will have.